TV18 and Hindustan Unilever Limited present Lessons in Marketing Excellence Season 14. Hello and a very warm welcome to a brand new session of uh, Lessons in Marketing Excellence Lime. I am so thrilled to be sharing the room with India's youngest talent, students with the sharpest acumen in marketing and the driving force to bring the best to the table. You are deemed to be the smartest brains in India. Give yourselves a round of applause, please. Let's go right to the HUL headquarters and dive into an exciting chat with Sanjeev Mehta, CEO and Managing Director, Hindustan Unilever Limited, and President Unilever South Asia, and Shireen Pan, Managing Editor of CNBC TV18. It's great to be back here and speak with you in person, Sanjeev. Always a pleasure. But you know, as we were uh, walking up on stage, I decided to ask Sanjeev, I said, where did you go to college? And he said, I'm an unusual one because I'm a chartered accountant by training and then happened to fall into the world of FMCG and marketing. Let's start with that story. Very, very unusual one. My route to the CEO's role has been a bit different. So I, I'm a chartered accountant by training and this is my second job. My first job was with Union Carbide. But very early in life, I decided that I want to be a businessman and not an archetype accountant. So even in Union Carbide, I'd moved to sales and marketing. And that is the route I'd been taking in my life, preparing myself to be a CEO. And when I was commercial director in Bangladesh, I was at a juncture mm. where uh, my business group president offered me the job of uh, being the chairman of the company. This is 21 years back. And I was very clear. I have been training myself to be a businessman. So I opted to become the chairman of Unilever in Bangladesh. And for the last 21 years, I have now been uh, running businesses in different parts of the world talk about investing in people uh, because what uh, what HUL is also known for uh, along with the many of your timeless brands uh, is the fact that it's the CEO factory at least it's been the CEO factory uh, for the Indian ecosystem for the Indian entrepreneurial ecosystem what do you believe enables that culture and what do you do today to ensure that you retain that culture you know CEO's job is the best job in the world I can tell you that. And uh, you know, something which we are very proud of is the tag that we are a CEO factory. And not just in India, but in India and abroad. Uh, last count we did, we had more than 400 CXOs who proudly wear a badge trained by Hindustan Unilever. And uh, this is a service we do to India Inc. and to the nation as well, that we breed great managers who go on occupy big positions. And if you look around, it's not just the traditional companies, but new age companies. Yeah, whether it is Amazon, whether it is Flipkart, whether it is Nika, whether it is Airtel, they are full of HUL people. And uh, the reasons are many. Is first, it starts with having a great employer brand. And great employer brand, there's a lot of work which Anu and the team do in building the brand. But at the core is, everyone wants to join a winning organization. You don't want to join an organization which is not winning, right? The second one is, you want to join an organization where there is a very clear implicit contract that, hey guys, you look after the business and we will look after you. We will develop you. We will invest in you, we will take risk with you, and we will make you a better person than who you are. So we get the best, and then we make them better. And the kind of training we give them, at a very young age, we have brand managers who are given responsibility of managing budgets running into hundreds of crores. That's the kind of risk we do. The kind of training we do is, we give them, you know, there are, very few marketeers who have not worked in sales and very few senior sales managers who have not worked in marketing. So we round you up to become good business managers. And then we have a very clear process 
of hand holding when they join, anchoring them with senior leaders who invest in them, then as they go up, the way we kind of uh, uh, you know monitor their development, the kind of training and development we give, the kind of challenging roles we give for them, the kind of planning we do for them, that's something very unique. And uh, you know, many times people ask me that, as a CEO, what's your role? Mm. And I say that my role is around three axes. One is performance management. That's very critical. Second is building distinctive capabilities which are hard to replicate, like the entire reimagination. And the third is people, talent, and succession planning. Just before coming here, Anu and I, what were we discussing? We were discussing our young talent, and we were discussing the succession plans. That's the kind of importance we do. And that is the reason we are able to nurture great talent. And what is also at this point in time a, a raging debate uh, online, nationally and globally uh, is what's happening in the workforce. And I think it's been exacerbated on account of the pandemic, you know, hybrid models, work from home, flexi hours and so on and so forth. And now this whole business of work-life balance, you know, a, a CEO uh, wrote a LinkedIn post, which he believes I had a conversation with him yesterday, and he says he was, it, you know, people didn't take away the nuance. His point was that in the first five years of your career, uh, work as hard as you possibly can because that builds the foundation for a career, and a career has to be treated as a marathon and not as a sprint. And so the first five years, invest all you have in building the foundations of a great career. Now, he was trolled. He was spanned, saying there is no work-life balance. What are you talking about? You know, Are you trying to employ slaves and so on and so forth? But I, I want to understand from My you because your perspective on this, and really because you know this is a young audience who is going to be starting their, their careers, their journeys. Uh, how, how did you treat this, and how do you treat sure. this today? Sure. Yeah, is uh, like I said, now I've been a CEO for 21 years. And when I get up in the morning, I get up pretty early. And I get up with the same kind of enthusiasm. And I look forward to starting my day with the same amount of zeal that I did when it was my first day as a CEO. Because I love my work. And when you love your work, you do it with passion, and you work for an organization where the purpose and values are in sync with your own purpose and values, then work is fun. It's not a chore. So the question of work-life balance doesn't arise. You know, work-life balance, I'll tell you the best way of looking at it is, you have to earn work-life balance. Yeah? When you develop your skills, that same quantum of job, you can do it in a much shorter time. So you don't have to sit in. The culture of if my boss is sitting, I have to sit in office. And if my peers are sitting, I have to sit in office, are long gone. Today, we are least bothered when a person comes to work and when he goes home, so long as they deliver what they are promised to do. We don't even have a dress code. If you wear a t-shirt and jeans and come to office every day, that's perfect. We want you to be comfortable in your skin, but we want you to bring your best self to work. How do you ensure that high-performing high brands stay relevant uh, and stay relevant in a market that is so fast-changing? Sure, sure. You know, creating a timeless brand takes a huge amount of effort. I think first important bit is that the purpose, you know, the very purpose of business exists to meet societal needs. So the brand has to be relevant from a perspective of meeting societal needs. The second important bit is, it has to be contemporary. It can't be a fuddy-duddy brand in a new age. So people, the new generation should be able to relate to it. And it should be a brand which should be able to traverse the heart and mind of consumers. Yeah? Business is a force for good, and so is a brand. 
So brand in today's context, for instance, if you look at our country, if it has to be made timeless, it has to meet the needs, so I would call it that it has to have product superiority. Second is, we are living in a developing world. And while the pricing is relative and not absolute, it should be able to connote value in the minds of consumers. And the third very important axis is sustainability. Yeah? If a brand has superior functionality, has a pricing which in the minds of consumers creates value, and is on the path of sustainability, it will definitely be loved and lapped by the consumers. That's how you make a timeless brand. So innovations have to play a very big part, is your communication has to be very contemporary, and very importantly, what the brand stands for, never get away from that. A brand can't be everything for everyone. But what it stands for, it should stand with glory. Mm -hmm. And that's an important aspect that you bring up because you, as you said that a brand cannot be uh, something for everyone and, and, and a brand that stands the test of time and stands the test of the market uh, usually are distinct and as they say, uh, you know, profit is in the niches. But since you're looking now at adjacencies, and that brings us to the question of brand extensions as well, and, you know, what is the peril of extending a brand? Uh, what are the challenges? But what are the, also the opportunities, and what should you be mindful of? Certainly. You know, I'll give some examples which will basically, uh, uh, in many ways, uh, I would be talking about just to make home a point, I would be stretching the imagination a bit. Take Surf Excel, yeah? It's our largest brand, and it's on a journey to becoming our first billion-dollar brand. It's a fabulous journey it is on. When do you get to the billion mark? We'll celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, look at Surf Excel. It is in a bar format, yeah? If you want to rub your clothes, and if you want to go in for a solution wash, yeah, you have Surf Excel powders, if you have a machine at home, you have a Surf Excel Matic. And if you are a more evolved consumer and much more conscious about your clothes, you may want to use a liquid. So you have Surf Excel liquids. And then if you were to look at uh, things like pods and capsules, Surf Excel will be there. Yeah, so these are very clear formats where you will be extending Surf Excel, which started from bars and powders to other formats. But if you were to stretch your imagination and ask, it's all about cleaning, right? So if I can clean clothes, can I use Surf Excel as a shampoo, cleaning hair? No, it won't work. Yeah, so that's where people trip and fall. Thinking that you have a brand, it's doing well, so you can extend it to any area. No. You extend it, which is logical, and the extension should not only borrow from the core, but it should build the core. That's where it will add value, otherwise you will trip and fall. So when it comes to brand extensions, we don't take this decision very lightly. This is a decision with board conversation. And uh, we are very circumspect because we want to strengthen the brand and we are never flippant about it. There are times when you create a master brand, but master brand also should have an architecture where it can carry different products within its portfolio. Well, Sanjeev Mehta, always a pleasure. Thank you very, very much for joining us today and being so candid, forthright, and always a pleasure. Your conversation. Thank you, Sanjeev. Thank you, Shireen, for that insightful conversation. On that note, let's take a quick break. And on the other side of the break, we bring to you Lime Season 14 Finale. Stay tuned to know which team backed the coveted 10 lakhs grant prize out of the 21,000 students that registered. 
CNBC TV 18 and Hindustan Unilever Limited present Lessons in Marketing Excellence the Limited present Lessons in Marketing Excellence Season 14. Welcome back. You're watching Lessons in Marketing Excellence Season 14 finale. Let me welcome on stage Aditya Kasyap, Home Care India Home and Hygiene Head HUL, who has been the brains behind the theme this year. Over to you, Aditya. The theme this year is on integrating brands into the gaming community and gaming as uh, you know what's almost very quickly uh, becoming uh, not just a pastime but a serious form of engagement for people across the country. Right? Uh, as HUL, we genuinely believe and we walk the talk in terms of uh, wanting to be at the forefront of marketing and uh, therefore the choice of gaming and how we integrate uh, you know, really large, big Unilever brands into gaming was the, the sole theme and the backbone of Lime. The way that we split Lime this year is we had 22,000 people, like I said earlier, talking to us on, uh, on how they can uh, integrate benefits of, uh, of brands into gaming. We had on the second round semifinals really speaking to us about how you can effect purchase and really walk the talk and show the money when it comes to integrating brands with gaming. And today, as a part of the finals, we really have the teams really talk about purpose and how do you live and bring alive a brand purpose uh, through, uh, through an integration with, um, with gaming. Without further ado, all the best to the participants in the finals and uh, may the best team win. Thank you so much and over to you, Mukta. Let me get the ball rolling and invite our first team on stage. Team three marketeers from Indian School of Business. And your time starts now. Let's talk about India's most loved detergent brand, Surf Excel. With its childhood focused approach and with its far reaching impact, Surf Excel is prone, uh, I mean, resilient to all sorts of gaming imitation. Moving on, our target product is liquid detergents. The reason for choosing this is the rapidly increasing number of washing machine users in India whom we want to move up the value chain from powders to liquids. Our target audience is basically India's rapidly growing middle and upper income households with distinctive features like affordability for premium quality fabric and expensive clothes and a premium laundry product to fulfill all their needs at once. Now moving on to our gaming integration, we have added two new features in the form of Miss Excel and Mud Puddles. Miss Excel represents everyday superheroes who enable others to navigate through life. We have also introduced a new challenge in the form of Mud Puddles. When Jake falls in Mud Puddle, clothes get stained, the player slows down. Jake needs to remove the mud from his clothes to regain speed, otherwise the policeman catches him. There are two choices, normal detergent powder and Surf Excel liquid. On choosing normal detergent powder, stains are lightened, not completely removed, but choosing surface liquid completely removes stains and fills the water bar. Imagine being in a supermarket. You're shopping, you're waiting, your children are restless. You see our gaming kiosk, you try out our new version of Subway Surfer with Surfexel. You give it a shot now, you'll want to download it later. Additionally, we also plan to launch purpose-led digital ads featuring Miss Excel on Surfexel liquid matic uh, packaging. Moreover, in line with initiating large-scale behavior change to conscious, responsible buying behavior, we want to give a real-world push with waste collection marathons as mass engagement events and educational trips and science fairs with children where we make our present and future consumers question what goes into their products about biodegradability and sustainability now and make responsible buying decisions later. Apart from our short-term activation goals, it's also important to look at the bigger picture of sustainability, which we intend to do through our water conservation and plastic reduction partnerships. Now let's talk numbers. For this campaign, we project a cost of around 32 crores, which we broken down into around 88% for marketing efforts, which we further broken down into around 36% for digital ads and around 30% each for discount coupons and gaming kiosks. We aim to acquire and add 7 lakh new households into the Liquids family within the next six months, bringing the CAC to around 438 rupees. With a, assuming a lifespan of about two years, we, in, we project a revenue of around 110 crores, which brings the LTV to 1500, and the LTV to CAC ratio of around 3.4, which is significantly higher than the industry benchmarks. In a nutshell, we intend to awaken our consumers' conscious as we help them revisit their childhood the Unilever way. Thank you. Perfect. 
So, hi, uh, great presentation. My question to you is, what are the two or three big drivers to industry beating CAC uh, that you just pointed out at 438? What do you think really brings it down, both in terms of your content and your integration? Sure. So, uh, one, Surf Excel in itself is such a, such a well-known and household brand that you would not need, you know, very expensive product launch sort of a campaign to integrate, uh, you know, to acquire new households into your, into your, in, in, to get them on the journey. Secondly, we are using very engagement-driven sort of marketing efforts. Uh, for example, you would have seen gaming kiosks. Gaming kiosks are not a very common concept when it comes to India. But here you could integrate them within your distribute, existing distributor model with modern trade, all right? And you could uh, get the ball rolling with them, which will not cost as much as marketing effort does. So to summarize, it's number one, your existing user, you know, your brand loyalty, so I should put it. And secondly, your low cost marketing efforts, which are more engagement driven than reach driven. And next up, we have Team Sublime from ASPJN Institute of Management and Research. All right, so your time starts now. We'd like to start our presentation by celebrating women who are a timeless inspiration to millions of Indians. They're a testament to the fact that no woman should be held back from reaching her true potential. Now, coming to our gaming integration, the game that we've chosen is Sims 4. This is a lifestyle simulation game that helps you explore your creativity to whatever extent you want. Let me give you a walkthrough of our gaming integration idea. This is Dao in association with Sims 4. Introducing AR-enabled avatar creation to flaunt the real you in the game. We add new traits in lieu with Dove's vision for the players. Engage in AI-enabled positive conversations with the NPCs. Understand satisfaction levels, compete in new leaderboards and earn exclusive Dove credits. Come, be a part of the communities at the round tables and do check out the Dove Club. Better moisturizing, better satisfaction. Take care of your sim by using Dove products. We came across these four methods that help accelerate the mindset and subsequent behavioral changes. And through this integration, we have covered all the four. Firstly, we plan to onboard real life icons like Mithali Raj, Avni Lekharia, Rani Rampal on the game to host talk shows. Through our NPC conversations, when we reward players for re uh, replying in certain ways, they are more likely to analyze than change the way they converse with others. Developing a new talent and skills through the Dove sagas would also be an effective way of introducing a collaborative mindset. Lastly, we understand the importance of positive reinforcements and we have included in-game tangible re rewards for the same. Now, we aim to reach maximum women by generating traction through primary three channels, brand support, partnership, and media push. The Sims comes under the banner of EA, and we can use EA's game existing marketing channels to promote the integration. Along with this, HUL's wide-reaching PR campaign can help tap more and more players onto the game. Great presentation. Uh, two doubts I have in my mind. One, I don't see this integration to be very organic. Two, I don't see, while I see a change in the behavior, or the self-esteem going up, I don't see how that translates into a purchasing behavior change. So when we're talking about the target audience, which is women living in tier one cities from the age of 18 to 35 years, uh, these are women who are now becoming very conscious of the choices that they are making. And one of the mindset changes that we wanted to inculcate through our gaming integration was that we wanted to change the purchase intent from basically beauty standards to, beaut uh, to brand benefits. So that is how we tend to move this purchasing intent. And I do agree that it is not going to be an overnight thing. It will require some time to shift, but through our integration and through the mindset changes that we propose, uh, we would be able to bring this change. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Team Zaglan. Thank, Thank, Thank you so Thank you. much. CNBC TV 18 at Hindustan Unilever Limited.